Here's the thing. Your psychology, your resistance to marketing and sales is hurting your business. It's hurting your clients. It's hurting the financial health of you and your family. And it's hurting the world. And you've got to get over it. Hey, I'm Cole Fink, and I love working with professionals, whether you're a lawyer or an accountant or a consultant of some sort, anyone kind of in that sphere. And whether or not you're in a large firm and you're either a partner or you're hoping to be one, or even if you're a solopreneur and you're running a solo practice of your own, the likelihood is that you are responsible not just for delivering great work, but also for bringing work in. Okay, and so you are expected by default to do something resembling marketing and sales. But the problem is, you hate marketing and you hate sales and you will do everything in your power to avoid doing either of them. So what does your business plan look like? I'd imagine your business plan, if we were to spend five to ten minutes talking about it, would sound a little something like this. Uh, my business plan is to work really hard and do great work for my clients so that they will refer me to others and come back when they need my help again. How'd I do? <laughs> is that your business plan? It is, isn't it? And you don't wanna go out and promote yourself and you don't wanna get into explicit sales conversations because you have a deep resistance to that. And why? I reckon the reason you have a deep resistance to marketing and sales, as so many wonderful people do, okay? So many altruistic, egalitarian, brilliant people have a deep, deep resistance to marketing and sales. And almost always, the reason is because we don't wanna feel like we're a slimy marketing and sales guy because we have been exposed to so many slimy, Marketing and sales guys. You know, like the, the social revolution that has taken over the internet has exposed us to tens, hundreds, thousands, thousands of absolutely reprehensible gutter slime people who we want to have nothing to do with and be nothing alike. And we see them doing marketing. We see them doing sales. And we think to ourselves, if I don't want to be like that guy, and let's face it, they're almost always guys, if I don't want to be like that guy, then I have to avoid doing marketing and sales. That's not true. It's not true. If you are a person with integrity, if you are a person who wants good things for other people in the world, if you are not a selfish jerk who's just in it for the money, then you're a person with integrity who wants good things for other people and you're not in it for the money. And you are that person with integrity whether you are in an honest conversation with a client or whether you're asleep. You're a person with integrity when you're walking the dog. You're a person with integrity when you're buying your shopping at the supermarket and, and this is the important part, you're a person with integrity when you are marketing your practice or selling your services. You can't be like the slimy sales dude that you see in your feed on Facebook or that gave you the creeps when you're at the mobile phone shop. You can't be like that person because you're not like that person. And doing marketing or sales doesn't turn you into a reprehensible gutter slime example of the human race. It turns you into a person of integrity who's marketing or selling. And that's fine. That's actually good. If you do great work and you help your clients, then they want to buy your service because it makes them better off. And they can't do that unless you make them aware of it. You could argue that if you are truly making the world a better place with your services, that it is a moral imperative <laughs> that you go out and tell people about what you can do for them so that they have the opportunity to spend the money with you to get the benefit of the services that you provide. Does that make sense? Now, I get it. One little uh, motivational video from Cole on the internet is not going to fix you or fix your psychology around marketing and sales, but hopefully this might be a catalyst that invites you to spend a little time kind of meditating on or thinking about your relationship with the idea of marketing your practice or selling your services. Hopefully, you can start to come to a rational belief 
right? Which is kind of the executive network of your brain. Yeah, the, the kind of the big conscious bit at the front. Come to a rational belief that actually marketing and sales is a good thing that it is in fact a moral good to market and sell your services. And if we can start there, then hopefully what we can do over time is slowly reprogram the irrational parts of your brain, the subconscious bits, the bit in the black box, the default mode network, the lizard brain, whatever, all that stuff back there that we kind of don't get direct contact with. Hopefully we can slowly start to reprogram that bit of your brain and bring it along for the ride as well. You do great work. You are a good person. You do deserve success. You need to learn to market and sell your services. Do it.